Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, there has been a whole bunch of new kit announcements that have just happened recently. And uh, what I thought I would do today is talk a little bit about some of those. Now, some of the kits I actually have in hand, the manufacturers have sent them to me, and a few of them have just been announced to me. So today we'll talk a little about them, maybe talk about when they're due to arrive, and the price if I have any of that information yet as well. Also, if you guys are in Ontario, Canada next week, uh, Heritage Con is going on. I will be there. I am excited to go see this thing. It is going to be a little cold up there. I'm an Arizona boy. It's almost 80 degrees here right now, and I heard it's going to be in the 40s, but, but still, all joking aside, I'm excited to get up there. And if you guys are up there, I'd love to meet with you. So uh, if you can, check it out. Also, we are getting closer and closer to the announcement date for my brand new kit. Uh, super secret, top secret, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we are almost at the point that I can announce it. It is going to be really cool. As I said in an earlier video, that uh, it is not World War II. So that's as much as I can tell you right now on it. But let's, we got a lot of cool things to take a look at. So let's get started. Okay guys, now I get to share with you a brand new aftermarket kit. Uh, this is in 16 scale and it is resin 3D printed. This is the conversion kit to take DOSWorks SDKFC 251-1, which is just the standard uh, ha German half-track, and convert it into the SDKFC 251-9, which has a little bit of extra shielding on top and also mounts the short 75 millimeter Stummel gun up on top. So what you're looking at right now is uh, the actual DOSWorks kit built up in the background. And then all of the parts that are going to come in this, uh, this aftermarket kit to convert it. So Panzer Concepts announced about a week ago that the, the kit will be coming out very, very soon. And we were inundated with emails saying when it's coming out, because they're very excited about this, to turn it into a different version. So Panzer Concept was nice enough to send me out a very early uh, production model of this. This is right out of the package. I have broken off a few of the little supports, and that is so when I show you the, the parts up close, you can see them. A lot of times the supports are blocking some of the detail. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to get in there and show you some of these parts. For example, here are the, uh, the MG42s that are mounted on top here. Some beautiful work. You've got the ammunition belts in there, the butt stocks, charging hammer um, handles, and even uh, tripods. Actually, bipods, excuse me, bipods, not tripods. And if you look just right, you can see that the barrel is basically a separate part in there. It's beautiful what the 3D printing can do on it there. Here is a close up of the main sprue. There's the actual Stummel gun. There is uh, rifling inside. There's the main part there. There's the basket and the, the guard for the back. Real nice detail that they get out of 3D printing. Just incredible. Hey, quick little side note too, while you're looking at the parts, uh, the gentleman, David Hobbs, is the man who did all of the measurements for this uh, aftermarket kit. He is down in Georgia and has access to the real SDKFC 251-9 at Fort Moore. And he went in there and did all of the measurements for Panzer Concepts. So this is a very, very accurate representation of that particular vehicle. And if you may or may not know already as well, David Hobbs does a lot of stuff for myself as well. All of my American subjects, he has a hand in helping measure and design all of of my 16 scale American kits like the M8, the uh, the Sherman, and the M10, things like that. So he helps out with that. He has access to all those vehicles. So all of that stuff that is designed over here, 
he has a hand in and we super appreciate all the hard work that he does. Okay guys, let's take a look at three brand new kits from TACOM that'll be arriving very, very soon. Uh, they are all based on the 38T chassis or the uh, the Jagdpanzer 38T, sometimes known as the Hetzer. Uh, now, you may know that TACOM has come out with uh, three different versions of an, an early, a mid, and a late, and they had it both ways, with and without interiors. Now, those kits are actually discontinued right now, but they are bringing out three brand new kits based on that. And when I say discontinued on the other ones, it's temporary. They're, they're gone usually for probably six months to a year, and then they'll be reissued again. But these are all going to be arriving very soon, and they're different variant versions of it. So the first one we have here is the, the Flam Panzer, or basically it's the flamethrower version of it. So it's going to have a little bit different. But back to one that if you're interested in a full interior, they have this one here. This is the Panzer 38T Command version with the full interior, and this one includes Winter Ketten. So it has special winter tracks that are inside here that weren't available in any of the other kits. So you see that. And then the last one, uh, the one that I think is kind of the coolest, uh, I, I honestly highly doubt this is real in any way, the, the Kugelblitz version of the Flak Panzer 38T. And what I mean by that is, so they did find a turret for this, the Kugelblitz, and they found the turret with the ring by itself. So it's been mentioned that it's going to be on certain different vehicles, so I don't know if there was line drawings of this or what, but it kind of makes sense. It's a cool little vehicle to have... You know, that little turret on there with the two, I believe they're 30 millimeter guns on top of there as well. So you basically have seen the other two quite a bit, uh, the way they've been sold with the uh, the with without interior, main difference being the winter kit. But what I thought I would do is open this one up and show you what the parts look like inside this kit. Okay, here we are. So here is the bathtub style hull with the the new superstructure up on top here so these are all brand new parts that are not shared inside any of the other uh, hets or kits that are out on the market and you see the giant opening ring here where that uh, kugel blitz turret would fit so i won't spend too much time showing you this it's pretty cool looking though just like that and these parts, some of these are actually going to be from the other kits. So obviously you're not going to need this part right here. So it's probably just this part back here that you're going to be required to use. Or maybe a few other little pieces. But like some of the gun pieces are for the other Hetzers that are out on the market. That is true with this version too. Obviously, you don't need all the uh, 75 millimeter shells. But now you'll have a bunch of bonus ones if you get this kit. But this will primarily be the suspension and the drive sprockets that'll be used off the B-sprue. There are, of course, two B-sprues because you need it for both sides, all the suspension parts. Next up, we have the Kugelblitz turret. Now, you may be aware, too, that uh, TACOM has made a Kugelblitz on top of the Panzer IV chassis. So it just this is that sprue right out of that kit designed to now fit on the, uh, the Panzer 38T. And I'll zoom in here and let you look at all those parts. I want to get really close up here for the guns. You see that they're slide molded and they have all of that fluted detail on there. Very nice. The big ball that makes up the, uh, the rotation on that. There we are. You will have the road wheels. Those are a common sprue throughout all of the uh, the Hetzers. Of course, the track. I'm gonna got you can have two sides of that. It is link, individual link right here, and then long length of track with a little bit of a uh, uh, looks. Oh, actually, there would be no sag on this, so they're all flat across the top there. This obviously makes putting the track together much much easier because you're only putting the individual pieces just around the drive sprocket and the. Uh, the return idler and then we have some of the accessory pieces just like that and finally some of the parts that are out of one of the other Hetzer kits and there's obviously a barrel inside here so obviously a few of the small parts you'll be needed for 
it's doing some of the details on the original uh, Jagdpanzer 38T. There we go. So there it is. There is a quick look at the uh, the Flockpanzer 38T Kugel Blitz. Uh, my opinion. A pretty cool little vehicle right there. I like the general shape of it. That's, I think, what's attracted me the most of this vehicle. And I think I, eventually, if I ever find time lately, I would like to build something like this. I think it would be kind of cool to, to have in the display case. Next up, I have another large-scale vehicle, or airplane in this case. This is brand new from HK Models. This is the 30-second scale A20J slash K Havoc slash Boston 4. So you can build either the American or the British version, the British being the Boston 4. Uh, you might remember that uh, HK Models had come out with the A20G. Now they've done a different variant. And if you're not familiar with that kit, that kit is absolutely gorgeous. They did incredible detailing on it, including all of the oil canning on all of the body parts, which is also in this kit right here. So it's very, very similar. Obviously, there's some variations between the two. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and just show you some of the parts. We won't do a full review on this one here because it's I did one on the A20G, and like I said, it shares quite a bit of those same parts. So let's open this up and show you what those look like. Okay, I'm going to jump right in and show you some of the detail. This is on the wing, of course, and you can see kind of like, best way that I can describe it is like a pillow effect. How each one of those rivets, uh, squares, kind of creates like the, the middle is kind of puffed up a little bit. And it just looks so good in person here. The detailing is just incredible on this kit. Very, very crisp. And I would show you more of this kit. Unfortunately, when they sent the, uh, the sample from Hong Kong, the Postal Service happened to destroy a great portion of the, of the kit. The bottom got smashed in and a few of the parts got crushed. In fact, um, show you that right here here's the body itself and you can see all the great detailing and there it is they <laughs> they happen to do a nice big crush job on this particular one so unfortunately this looks like the rest of this kit is going to be parts but although this might be able to be put back together enough and a few other parts were were crushed up a little bit but to give you an idea of what the body panels look like see all the different super detail on there but the other side of the fuselage was not damaged luckily so this is even a better shot of what the detailing is going to look like on here try to use the light to my effect here to show you it so if you want to know more about this particular airplane, uh, of more of the details, like I said, the, the other version of it, I have a video of the preview of that. It's a gorgeous kit. Check that out. And then, of course, this will be available hopefully within about a month or so. They are due to arrive here in the United States. Next up, we have the M3 Stewart initial production from Miniart. Uh, a little update on this kit. This kit is actually on its way to us right now and we should have it very, very soon. As you can see, it's got beautiful internal detail on it, including the radial engine that is included on this kit. Other exciting news is that Edward has announced their 140A scale P51B. Uh, the first one to come out will be a Royal Pack as well as a Dual Combo. Both of those are preliminary date about May. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the first uh, brand new kit that's being announced that I don't actually have here in hand. And I am going to show you first the SDKFC 234-2 Puma from Ryefield Models in 35th scale. Now, what you're looking at right now is the box art that just got announced. Uh, the actual, in fact, the entire kit 
really got announced to us about about two weeks ago and it was kind of a bit of a surprise because when they announced it to us they also told us that it's going to be ready to ship out of their factory within about a week from now so announcement and then it's on its way to us very very quickly right after that and this is exciting for a couple of reasons uh, first of all, it has an engine inside of it, and looking at all the CAD drawings here as well, it looks like it has a full interior. So that is a major uh, a bonus on this kit right here in 35th scale. Uh, it's perfect timing too because DOS Works 16th scale Puma will be uh, actually shipping out within a few weeks as well. So, And also there will be a resin 3D printed uh, sagged wheel set for the 35th scale Ryfield model kit as well. Now, Ryfield has told me that I will get a early uh, production version of this very soon. And, of course, I will have a YouTube video on that showing you guys all that. But also, I will have a very special pre-order price on that kit. Because it's going to be coming so soon, and we're estimating to be probably, let's say, late April, based on the way things are right now, late April... But uh, stay tuned. I, like I said, we will have a really, really incredible pre-order price on that that will uh, knock your socks off, so to speak. Also coming out from Ryfield Model are some other uh, kits, including the Panther G. This one has got the, uh, the night sights on it, as well as the armor uh, plates up on top and steel wheels. And keep in mind, too, they're also going to be selling... The, uh, the IR equipment separately that if you want to add it on to some of your other vehicles. And they're also going to have a Maybach engine set uh, available separately as well. Some, some cool stuff from Ryfield Model on the horizon. Okay, let's jump right in and look at some new kits from Border Models, including the SDKFC 251-1D. This is in 35th scale. This is a completely brand new kit. And to go along with it is this one right here. I'm not quite sure if it's got an SDKFC 251 slash number at all, but you can see it's a uh, 251 with obviously a top welded onto it and a, uh, a French turret mounted on top. So something very unusual. I have to say I haven't actually ever seen that vehicle in real life before, but Border Model has it coming out. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the 35th scale airplanes that Border Model has coming out. And I know these are really starting to take off, uh, especially for us. We sell a lot of these new 35th scale airplanes. And I think it's because guys want their uh, their aircraft and their armor collection uh, to match. It, it looks good when you have, or if you want to build a diorama and have them side by side. Now, the first one we're going to look at here is the Spitfire Mark 5B. And as you can see here, we have box art. And talking to border models, I've heard that this kit will be out fairly soon. So we've got the box art now, and that's going to be, I think, a beautiful kit. Also, this one is going to be very, very popular, and you'll see why in a second. And this is the A6 M2 Zero Fighter with interior engines and weapons. So just like uh, Border Model did with the Kate recently, they're doing the exact same thing with the Zero. So as you can imagine, they're also going to release it as a two-pack. This time you're going to get the Akagi deck with the Zero. But for all you guys who already have the Akagi deck with the Kate, uh, there's plenty of room, as you know, on there to put a Zero on there with the Akagi. Uh, I mean, excuse me, with the Kate. So that is just wonderful that they're going to do more and more of this 35th scale stuff like that. And also, uh, this is still in the very early stages, but here are some pictures or some CAD drawings, I should say, of the 35th scale Heinkel HE111H6. And just by looking at the CAD drawings, I think this is going to be another beautiful kit.
Well, there you go, guys. There is a look at some really cool, interesting kits. Excited to see a lot of those. Also, a quick update, too. The, uh, the DOS Work 116 scale Puma is actually getting closer and closer to uh, being done. And expect that sometime in early May, I've been told now as well. And one other last thing, my brand new 16 scale M8 Greyhound has shipped. It has left the factory. It is on its way, actually yesterday. So it's on its way to us and we expect them um, to arrive around the world uh, within the next couple of weeks. So very excited about that one. I am still working on the diorama right now. In fact, the diorama portion is done. I'm just waiting on my decals to actually finish up the actual M8 build. So I've got a couple of brand new build videos coming, just kind of waiting on a few other things to fall into place before I can release those. So, so there you go, guys. I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching. Please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.